welcome everyone to our practical lab on um, enriching image data with AI. Uh, I'm Jason Chow, uh, and I'm going to do this uh, practical lab along with um, Jana Omena. And so it is interesting to have this um, hybrid uh, presentation setting with a presenter presenting remotely and another presenter presenting um, physically in your room. So it is uh, fantastic to have this experiment and let's see how uh, well it will go. So with that further ado, let's get started. So um, at this practical lab session, we're going to introduce you to the two called names back to GUI. So um, Neospector GUI is a tool that helps you um, analyze images uh, using um, three different prior uh, proprietary vision APIs and one open source um, API. So, uh, so we'll first uh, uh, give a quick introduction to um, the uh, computer vision APIs. And then I will show you how to use the two and then I will hand over to Jana to explain um, to you how to make use of the outputs of the um, NIMS Vector GUI 2. Jana, any problem? Yeah, no, I'm fine. Okay, great, thank you. So uh, first, um, um, I may need to explain about um, AI and why do we need to use AI to analyze images? Well, um, AI now uh, sounds like kind of buzzword that, uh, that you may see the in industry people mentioning AI all the time. But, uh, but to be precise, why do we need to use uh, AI or, uh, or, um, or one of its um, subfields of machine learning in the analysis of images? Uh, let me use a classical example of uh, uh, of telling cat images from dog images. So you can suppose that we have a bunch of images of cats and dogs, and we want to uh, use a computer to automatically tell us which one is the dog and which one is the cat. Uh, how can we do that? Um, traditionally, we have to um, code some logic um, in, uh, and, and, tell, um, and run this logic to analyze each image to tell us which one is a dog and, it, and each one is a cat. But you can see that when you, um, but when you have to write those logic out, it is very difficult. As you can see that, well, um, cats may be um, sitting or standing uh, in different positions and you have different breeds and cats and dogs with different, um, well, well, hairs and with different styles, etc. So uh, if you uh, seriously want to write a, a program, uh, uh, manually, uh, manually writing an algorithm to, uh, to identify cats and dotted images, this is insanely difficult. I would say it's not um, uh, technically impossible, but it is uh, very difficult to do it. So, uh, so in the era of um, AI or machine learning, what we do things is not to write a program um, to tell us uh, um, about cats and dogs, but uh, first we collect a large um, um, a collection of cats and dogs images, and then we ask people to assign and label to each of these images. Okay, so we ask humans to assign, okay, this, okay, this one is a dog, this one is a dog, this one is a dog, etc. And we also ask humans to assign um, labels to cat images and we, and, and for, for um, so we ask, okay, this, so we tell um, the computer, this one is a cat and this one is a cat and this one a cat, etc. And then we, um, um, and makes these images together along with the labels, and we train a machine learning model. And so these, so this machine learning model looks like a black box because um, it is hard for a machine learning model to explain its logic. Well, it has its um, logic based on probability, but its explainability is relatively low. Uh, but what we can, but this, um, the strength of um, training a a machine learning model is that um, after doing the training, when we feed an unseen image um, to the model, um, the uh, model can tell us how confident it is about these images um, showing a cat. 
So, uh, so this is kind of a paradigm shift in image analysis. So in the past, uh, people made, uh, so when people approach the field um, of, um, of analyze, uh, of analyzing images, people might think about okay, developing algorithms to, uh, well, to analyze the image. But now in the in the machine learning era or in the AI era, we build machine learning models uh, to analyze images by uh, feeding by, by first by feeding a bunch of uh, uh, samples of images to a machine learning model and then. And then we feed an image to this model to see how probable the model thinks this is a cat or a dog. So this is this is roughly how it works uh, in a nutshell. So, but how can it um, help us um, 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 studying social media and, and images? And um, so, uh, well, indeed, it is hard to train a good machine learning model. So when it comes down to probability, uh, well, it is, so no, it, so it takes a lot of time to build a very good machine learning model. So we, uh, but we know that there are some tech companies out there um, who have trained already a bunch of um, machine learning models and they bundled this model into a single API. And API, uh, API stands for application programming interface. So an API is supposed to be invoked by applications or by code rather than by the users directly. Uh, what it does, so so these uh, computer vision APIs out there can um, process whatever images that we send it and it would uh, return us with the uh, results uh, um, 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 of these models. And you can see that there supposedly there isn't a single uh, a machine learning model. There should be a bunch of uh, machine learning model working in behind. And you can consider an API is kind of an aggregator of, uh, of a bunch of internal machine learning models. So let me give you a kind of a quick uh, 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 overview of of the sample outputs of Google Vision API. Uh, uh, Spectacle supports three both Python APIs, uh, Google Vision, uh, Microsoft Azure, and Terrify. Uh, but for the sake of simplicity, so let's stick to uh, Google Vision API first. And Google Vision API is uh, widely used in the um, digital methods community. Let's take this image as, as an example. Um, we can see that, okay, Google Vision API can tell us um, there's a sky. So you can see that this is, uh, um, uh, this picture was taken in the evening and it can uh, recognize that, okay, this uh, dark background um, um, is, is, uh, well, is a sky, so it is fantastic. It tells us that um, there are buildings in this picture and there's a crowd in this picture, so it is nice. Uh, in terms of objects, it tells us that there's, there are buildings, there are persons and even footwear, as you can see that some, um, uh, some pieces of footwear are captured in this foot photo. And you may see a, a play card used in the um, protest on display here, and it is not um, uh, printed, uh, it's hand, it handwritten. And Google Vision API has no problem recognizing this handwritten text. You can see that the handwritten don't suit a, don't suit a kids uh, well, uh, can be recognized by the API. So it is awesome. And um, so there might be a confusion. Okay, um, you have two things here. The first one is label. The second one is object. So why? So why they? So why there are two attributes about a picture? Well, um, so in so generally speaking, labels is about okay in general what um, uh, what is in this picture, and objects about some. Um, um, Descript of precise objects identified inside this image. So, um, so, so, is, so Google Vision API would not only give you, well, uh, well, a, well um, the name of the object, but also a bounding box. Well, uh, uh, where this uh, uh, particular object is located in this image. 
so this uh, this this pieces of information could be pretty useful. Um, Google Vision API also does facial recognition, so it detects face um, 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 the well face in, uh, so it can detect emotions from faces. Let's take this um, uh, um, picture as an as, as example. You see a lady showing a joyful expression, and Google Vision API and tells you for all these supported expressions, what is the likelihood of this expression? You can see that it's very likely to be joyful, very unlikely to be sorrow, very unlikely to be uh, anger, surprise, exposed burn with head, headway, et cetera. You can see that um, it, well, uh, uh, Google Vision API does pretty well in recognizing faces, but there's a limitation I will show you in a bit. And then, um, and we know that the, uh, the Google Vision API and some of these machine learning um, or vision, sorry, some of these vision APIs are heavily used in content moderation. So it is supposed to process a lot of not safer work or violent uh, images. So uh, the two pictures that I'm going to show you may be disturbing for some people and your this question is advised. So, so let's take this a picture as a sample. Is an example of racist killing in the United States? Yes. Um, because they're seeing different things here in the room and the phone. Yeah. Sorry, can you see me? Sorry. Since Jason is wearing two screens or two machines, I don't know where he's. <laughs> yes, from. we can hear you. Uh, it's only that on Zoom link, we can see uh, uh, that picture with George Floyd. And yes. here, um, we are seeing another one, the Don't Shoot Our Kids. I'm not sure if you are passing the slides. Uh, well, uh, okay, let me share the screen again. Uh, there it is. So can you see the correct slide? Yes, because Jason's computer is fine. Your mind is connected. No, no, Jen is not connected. No, my computer is not connected. The one connected to the projector is the... Is it all right? Um, so let me know when you are ready. Or maybe... I don't know. Okay. Oh, sorry. So, it's okay. Yeah. Oh. Yes, Jason, I'm sorry you can go on. <laughs> okay, great. Um, so, let's take this um, racist killing um, picture as an example. Um, you can um, see, okay, um, so we can see the um, of, of what this, what is the event related to um, this picture? Uh, well, the web detection feature is very useful in um, in uh, digital methods research, and so when you uh, enable um, web detection, you can see several things. So the first one is called web entities. So web entities are some entities defined by Google. They may be um, names of the persons, a name of a particular event, and some other things. So um, when we run um, web detection, we can see uh, where the name of the victim and the name of the um, um, police officer and the event ex and the precise event that this image that this image is related to. And also, we can see that okay, where can we can we also find this particular image? We can find so there are two types of URLs. One is called fully matching images. We know that this image has been widely circulated, so we can see okay, where. Uh, can we also find this image? Uh, well, there are well, a number of websites or URLs um, at which you can find this um, exact image. 
and also you can also find okay um where you can uh, so which web pages will show this particular image and you can also see a list of urls um of, of, of pages showing this particular image so um ajana will explain to you how we can exploit the domain names of these urls to study the circulation of images so um, let's take um, this um, picture as an example. Um, it is a, a, a picture of um, violent assault. Um, when we um, do a safety detection with Google Vision API, we can see that Google can, will give us, okay, is it, very, uh, is it likely to be an adult uh, photo or not safe web photo is unlikely. Is this proof of a medical note that unlikely, but it is very likely to be violent and possible racy. And, 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 and these are the attributes that um, Google uh, Vision can tell you. Uh, as what I said, um, the AI is not perfect. So uh, it is, so it is kind of a problem with uh, the machine learning algorithms, uh, perhaps in general, uh, for having problem in detecting um, the sorrow emotions of humans. So it's, so, um, so you can, so from the context of this photo, um, this man is at a funeral and he is clearly showing a sorrow expression, but Google Vision API mistook it as joyful. So when you use it, you need to, uh, well, analyze, or you need to use the result with caution. And particularly when you deal with um, some um, sorrow and sad emotions, they may not be super accurate. And this problem is not limited to uh, Google Vision. Some other um, facial um, machine learning models also uh, well, also have similar problems. And other um, uh, example is that for the picture on the right, you can see a f uh, some fire and some violent clash, but Google does not recognize it as violent. So, um, so when you, so whenever you use the outputs of the um, machine learning uh, models or the, or the Mission APIs, you have to, well, uh, well, well, so, uh, well, you have to uh, take some time to read uh, the outputs to see if they make sense at all. Sometimes they don't make sense. Well, well although these uh, APIs help you a lot in analyzing a lot of things, but sometimes, also, but they're not always right. Sometimes they make uh, quite silly mistakes. So there's a quick way to play with, um, Google Vision API, so it is pretty easy. Uh, so just click this link to open um, the, uh, the Google Vision API page. It has a try it demo. So the easiest way to try out Google Vision API is to open this page and drag and drop an image into this area to see what the Google Vision API can tell you. So let me randomly drop a picture into this box. Um, I'm sorry about the well, the screen share. It cannot show. Um, uh, I'm selecting an image, but uh, yeah, I can just let you that I'm, I'm, I am selecting a random image. So I selected a random image. I'm dropping it to this. Uh, um, area. Okay, Google uh, is asking me to pass a capture test, and I guess, uh, yeah, okay. Google does not think I'm a bot. Great. So we can see that Google can recognize these small faces in the picture, and um, no emotions could be detected. And okay. uh, you can see okay, how Google thinks of each of these um, faces. When we go to object, we can see that, okay, uh, uh, Google Vision correctly recognizes there are many persons in this uh, image and you can, uh, well, uh, go to each of these um, person and see the bounding boxes. So each of these rectangles is called a bounding box. 
and you can see the precise um, area of of um, each object. Okay, you can also recognize a piece of furniture. So this um, so this desk table is recognized as a piece of furniture and this clothing and something like that. And in terms of labels, as what I mentioned, so label is is more about what well, in general what this uh, image is about. So it does not, so it's not so much about the uh, ob precise objects identified in this picture, but in general, what is, uh, uh, so uh, uh, what this um, image um, um, can tell you. So it from chair, podium, suit table, et cetera, public speaking, projection screen, and these are all um, well, correct labels. Um, 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 for this image, and you can scroll down to see some other labels, and 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 you also see the um, safe search that I mentioned, and you can see it's uh, related to adult medical violence and anything else, and they are not classified it as uh, well, 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 as an, a safe image. So, um, well, this uh, drag and drop demo is good for you to try out a. Well, a couple of pictures that you want to study. So it is uh, great that uh, before you decide to use um, Google Vision, we use this demo to try a, a couple of images to see what it can tell you. But of course, when you do research, this drag and drop demo is not scalable. You cannot uh, analyze well, hundreds or thousands of images using this demo. So, uh, so you need to use uh, tools like the Inspector Group to help you use Google Vision API. So let me go back to my uh, presentation. So, um, so that what is the Inspector GUI? So um, the Inspector GUI is a tool that helps you um, work with um, well, a bunch of a Google Vision APIs. So why it is a, a, a GUI attached to it? Well, I'm not the first one to build uh, a new inspector. The first new inspector uh, is built by the um, purest speaker um, of, uh, of this um, uh, practical lab um, track. Um, so, uh, so, so thanks to um, his work uh, um, um, of the first new inspector, some other uh, um, the inspectors uh, were developed, and the initial uh, version of the inspector is a client for researchers um, to send the images to Google Vision API and get the results back. And then um, the, the inspector GUI has also uh, very close ties with this mark data sprint because this is a product um grew out of last year's math data sprint so very so um so thanks to the opportunity um, um to uh, uh, brought to us by this um smart data sprint we have this um inspector GUI too and and um so the inspector GUI now is a tool for researchers to uh well to uh um upload their images, the images stored on the computer and send these images to um, these APIs for analysis. Or uh, depending on the um, scraping use that you use, some scraping use would give you image URLs rather than the image files. You can also um, copy and paste the image URLs to the inspector GUI and the inspector GUI can also send the, these URLs to uh, this um, this machine learning um, sorry this uh, computer vision APIs. So right now, we, uh, the inspector group supports three proprietary APIs: Google, Microsoft Azure, and Clarify. Uh, by saying proprietary, they are not free to use. Uh, but it does not mean that uh, you can. But, but, but it does not necessarily mean that you have to pay them in order to use them. Uh, for example, when you first open an account with Google Vision, Google sorry, when you first go open an account with Google Cloud and Google Vision, um, Google Cloud would give you um, three hundred um, US dollars um, in credit, and so you can uh, spend a uh, three hundred um, US dollars uh, on your account for free. And 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 is and it would be enough for you to handle a couple of uh, 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 um, um, thousands of images. 
Also, Microsoft Azure will also give you some um, free credits when you register uh, with it for the first time. For Clarify, Clarify is easier. It gives you every month some free credits to you. So if you are not abusing it or doing well, analyzing too many images, you don't need to pay it at all. It has a month, uh, kind of a, a monthly free credit. And um, the uh, new static uh, GUI also supports uh, uh, an open source um, API. Right now, um, uh, I, I've built a open source API that serves a open source uh, um, um, computer vision model. But um, there's a caveat. Well, so this open source model looks free, but the performance of the open source model uh, uh, well, uh, is not as good as the results of the uh, proprietary or commercial models. So when you so it is so uh, so only use the open source model when you are really interested in exploring the open source computer vision thing. Otherwise, uh, if you want to look at um, um, the image data on social media in general, it's better to use our all or one of these um, proprietary APIs. So after um, the inspector uh, gets the result from this API, the inspector would aggregate the result in a uh, single um, CSV file. Or uh, if you are um, a text selfie, you may also open the JSON uh, format to inspect the original results. So um, not all data uh, could be trans could be easily formatted into CSV. So uh, when you look at the CSV, it is a so you, uh, so 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 some data could be missing, like the bounding boxes that I mentioned. So for if you want the coordinates of of those bounding boxes in object detection, you need to go into the um, CSV format. But if you're not interested in that and you want to know the well the, well, the labels, the web entities and URLs, I think um, the CSV file would work uh, best for you. And um, so just now we mentioned that um, Google, sorry, um, the inspector GUI supports a free proprietary APIs. And um, so we have, so you have to be aware that when you use multiple APIs, um, some of the features do not have the same name, same same name, but they could be related or they could be uh, completely unrelated. So um, I would say that the features offered by Google Vision and Microsoft Azure are pretty close, but they may just have different names. Let's say uh, Google calls it safety TD um, detection, Microsoft calls it adult detection. So, so, so they tell you more or less the same thing about the safety of a picture, but they have well, different names um, 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 in their documentation. Uh, but for the face, well, uh, Google and Microsoft have the same name. Uh, in terms of uh, well, object or label de um, de detection, Google, uh, well, um, can, and encapsulates uh, label and objects into the label feature, but uh, but in uh, Microsoft Azure it is split into well um, three different um, um, features, and um, and in terms of logo uh, of some popular products or brands, uh, Google calls it uh, logo and Microsoft calls it brands. So it is um, so when you work with multiple API, it is better for you to. Uh, read the documentation um, of these um, features, and you can see some similarity or or some or or or, or, or what, what what are different and what and what are not. And um, clarify uh, adopt a slightly different model. So that so you have to um, select this model one by one, and uh, so 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 the so the clarify uh, surface. And uh, well, uh, conceptualize the uh, the uh, um, um, the models a bit differently. So when you use food, you have to select a uh, food, and 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 when you want to recognize celebrities, you have to select celebrity. So the control is more um 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 um, um, um so you have a finer control of what you uh, uh, of what model you want to use and what you want to recognize. So is that okay? So, so, okay, let's go to the demo. 
Um, so uh, you may go to my GitHub page to download um, the Inspector GUI. And um, as well as that, um, we, are, we are trying to use a commercial API. So they are not free to use uh, without registering. It may take some time for you to register with these APIs to get free credits. So you may um, click this link to download um, a free access keys that are prepared. And these keys are only uh, valid for the purpose of this uh, practical lab and they will become invalidated by midnight today. So if you're interested, you well, I guess you uh, you have access to this slide and uh, well, go to this link to download the Inspector GUI, um, download a test image data set and download um, some test tokens. So let's, okay, okay, let's do, so if you're interested, you may follow along, but if you just want to see um, how it works, no problem, just sit and watch, no worries. So let's download Inspector GUI. So open the GitHub page, um, and um, on the right, you see um, releases, and click here, Inspector GUI, and you can click here, and then you scroll down, um, New Spectre GUI is cross-platform. It supports uh, um, Windows, Mac, and Linux. So, so depending on the type of computer you're using, you should choose um, um, the corresponding um, um, version. If you are running a Mac, click the Mac OS sheet file to download the Mac OS version. If you are running Windows, click the Windows version and download the Windows versions. Well, usually you should uh, pick a Win64 because now most um, uh, most Windows, um, uh, most uh, uh, personal computers are 64 bits, but in case you're running a, a relatively old computer and, it, and you are sure that it is 32 bits, then you can um, choose the 32-bit version. So, um, so let's open um, the downloaded files. Okay, I have to switch to another window. Or it may be better for me to share the whole screen. Okay, can you see my whole screen? Yeah, I think so. Okay, after you downloading uh, a a a well, these file for your machine, just unship un, uh, it. I'm doing this demo using a Mac, but uh, on the PC on Windows, it well this well this uh, this well this, the steps are more or less the same. So after um, the com, uh, extracting um, the zip file, you will see the program the executed program for the inspector GUI. Double click on this program and let's see uh, um, uh, what happens. So, um, so when you first uh, open the inspector GUI, you may encounter this warning, uh, this, uh, this warning message. It tells you that, okay, these uh, this, this program was downloaded uh, from the internet. Are you sure you trust this program and you want to run it? Um, so it happens to the programs that you are not downloaded uh, through um, Apple's App Store or something like that. So you have to um, ask uh, your Mac OS to, uh, to allow this program to run explicitly. So the way to do it is to click cancel first, just click cancel first. Um, go to the system preferences um, of Mac OS, go to the security and privacy setting, and then um, go to privacy or security in general. Let me see where can I find this. Okay. Let me run it again. Okay, in my case, I already authorized the app 
um, to run yesterday. So 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 it's just asking me to uh, well to click that button to open it. But uh, yeah, but when you um, run it for the first time on your computer, you you you, you have to go to the um, system preferences uh, general and click a bunch uh, and click some buttons to allow it to run. So I have already put uh, well a detailed instructions uh, for uh, showing you how to do it. So um, go to the um, main page of the um, link that I showed you. So uh, there's a link to the instructions on how to allow the respective grid to run at first launch on Windows and Mac. You will see that um, when you run it on Windows, you have to, uh, well, don't, well, don't click the don't run, you have to click the more info um, link here and click run anyway. Uh, before you can successfully um, run Neem Spectre GUI. When you um, run it on a Mac and you have to go to um, system preferences, uh, or, uh, general, and you have you, you will see a message here, Neem Spectre GUI uh, is, uh, was blocked and you have to click open anyway uh, uh, to run it. So there are some there are some few steps that you have to do. Uh, after doing it, you can uh, um, you uh, you will need to do it again if it is the same version. So so now you can uh, now we have um, a new spectacle um, I'm running um, on my Mac. So now um, as I told you, you need to um, um, tell uh, well the. Google, Microsoft, and Clarify API are not free. You need to supply a credential file or API keys to Neem, uh, to Neem Spectre uh, in order for you to use these proprietary APIs. So just click um, the um, URL here. It takes you to my Google Drive and you can download the temporary access tokens for this practical lab. Just download the um, temporary tokens. Download the temporary tokens. Save Jason? it. Jason, yes. can yes. you show uh, again? Can you show again what they should click to get the temporary? This token? one. Sorry. Yes, just to sh for you to show again what they can click to get the temporary credential files. Yes. The, well, the, the last link on this slide. Or uh, if possible, please help, uh, Jana, please help um, copy and paste this link into the chat. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I can see, well, um, yeah, uh, it's great that you want to try it, so just download it. So after download, so this is just a very small file. You um, it should take less than far less than a second to download it. After downloading it, just double click it to extract the content, and you will see two files. You will first see a file for Google Vision and this, and a second file for Microsoft Azure and Clarify. Here. Um, so we, so um, so when you first open um, the inspector GUI, um, they are all disabled. They are not enabled. So you need to click. Uh, you sorry, you need to click here to uncheck to check this box to enable Google Vision. Um, well, there are the these are the features available uh, from the Google Vision API, and if you want it check it. If you don't want it, it's better to uncheck it. Uh, so when you do research, um, each feature costs you money. So it is wise to only 
leave the options that you need when you um, do research. Otherwise, it would um, charge you more and your free credits um, uh, 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 cannot leave as long as you might expect. So it is, let's say, uh, I assume that my um, data set uh, would have nothing to do with, with landmark. So I uncheck landmark and I don't assume that my data set would have something with brands, logos, so I uncheck logos. So it is a, a better way to um, use the resources wisely. So um, you can you will see the credential file. A few let's click browse to select the Google uh, Vision API's credential file. So let's go to the um, 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 the files that just downloaded and select the, this Google Cloud Vision um, um, credential file. Then we may play with Google Azure first. If we uncheck the features that we don't want, that, well, the brand names are, are, are not interesting to us, and perhaps, well, descriptions may not be interesting to us. Yeah, but, yeah, but let's leave uh, descriptions. And for Microsoft Azure, you need to put in two things. You need to put in the endpoint and subscription key. Open the Microsoft Azure and clarify key text files that I gave you. You, you, can, you can already see the necessary information here. Just copy the endpoint from this file and paste it into the Inspector GUI. The endpoint, uh, well, if, if it is a URL, make sure that you, you, you are pasting a URL to the endpoint and some strings to, and, 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 and a string of characters to the key. And for clarify, it is the same. First, um, uh, so for, for clarify, you can only choose one model at a time. This is how its API works. So now we just choose general and let's copy the clarify key from the text file and paste it to the API key field. Can everyone follow? So just shout out if you have any um, difficulty or questions. Okay, then we need to, well, I will add some images to uh, use better GUI. If you already got some images, you can just click add image files on this computer to choose some images that you want. Uh, I'm, I don't know how many images I have here. Um, I'm not so sure. sure. Um, but in case you don't have any, uh, images that you want to use, um, we have already prepared a, a test um, image data set for you. So right, go back to this slide and you will see a URL for you to download to test, um, well, uh, a test image data set. Just open this URL and um, download the test data set. You see the images here and click download all. It's just okay. Extract them, uh, extract the file and you will see the image files. So they are well, uh, uh, are four ways for you um, to um, add images to an inspector GUI. The first way is to add um, image files or add individual image files. You can click this box to open this um, open files dialog and um, you can choose uh, individual images that you want to analyze and click open. So it works the same way on Windows. 
so the second, so um, depending on your scraping tools, uh, some scraping tools would organize um, the images in folders. So you may need to add a folder containing, uh, well, well, hundreds of thousands of images. So you may also uh, add or not individual uh, image file, but all, uh, but a folder containing images. So you can click this um, button to select a folder um, uh, that contains uh, the images that you want to study. Uh, just, uh, just select this and uh, click open and the folder is added to this um, um, box. And, and well, you may also use a text file containing the um, um, uh, image locations, but let's leave it to later if you want to see this feature when you work on the project during the data sprint. And also, you can also um, add the URL of images to this uh, box. Let's uh, randomly bring up um, Google, uh, Google Images. Oh wow well, wow well, okay let's okay let's do it the simple way uh, so I want to uh, open this image so I just open um, so I just open this web page and I cop and I copy the link of this image so you can see that you can save images and you can also copy image link. So I just copy the link to this image and paste it to this box. Uh, so it, depending on your scraping tools, um, 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 you, uh, well, you, you can find a, li a long list of URLs um, in a output CSV file or text file. And in those cases, you can just paste these URLs into this box. So, um, so, 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 so this, so you can add, um, well, a folder to this box, you can add the um, full path to images to, 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 to this box, or you can add a URL um, starting with HTTP or HTTPS to this box. Then we, uh, then, then, then it's almost done. Um, you can see that it has two output files. The, uh, so it has a JSON version of uh, uh, output and CSV version of output. It is better, so it is always a good practice for you to rename the output file. Of course, it is not mandatory to rename the output. Uh, uh, the inspector GUI already um, um, has a default um, output file name uh, based on the date and time, but it is always a good practice to uh, rename the output to avoid confusion when you uh, work with many things. So let's just do, so let's just give it a name. For example, we want to do it uh, kind of a, a smart um, practical lab. And we also um, rename the uh, uh, file for, uh, um, uh, well, we name the, we name the CSV file in the same way. So, after, so, um, so, so it is pretty easy. So let me um, just briefly um, summarize what you need to do before you click this invoke APIs button. First, um, you have to enable the APIs that you want that you need to use. Select the features that what you want to um, enable. Don't select the, the features that you want that that you don't need because it uh, uh, because um, 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 you will be charged based on every features that you select. And uh, for Google Vision, you need to select uh, a credential file. Uh, when you work on your project, you need to get your own credential file. And there are instructions on my GitHub page about the steps to um, get the your own, well, uh, to get your own credential file from Google Cloud. For Microsoft Azure, also select the features that you want and, and paste the uh, endpoint and subscription key to these two boxes. And the same applies to clarify key. Uh, uh, well, the same as Google Vision, you can also find the instructions uh, on how to get um, these endpoints and keys uh, from Microsoft and clarify and well, on my GitHub page. And so after adding the image locations to, to, to this box and renaming the output file, just click Invoke API to uh, use 
uh, the the well the, uh, this um 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 computer vision API. So for those who are um, um, working at the same location, well, I understand that uh, you are share you effectively sharing a university's connection, and it may take some more time for you to run these images. But bear in mind, they should finish pretty quickly if you uh, have uh, if 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 you just use it at home uh, with the other people um, 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 sharing the connection. So. We are not analyzing a lot of images, so we just work, so we are just working with a few, and they are just done. And click OK. So let's go back to uh, to the folder uh, in which you opened it. Um, Inspector GUI, you will see the result file just here. One is uh, called CSV and other one is called JSON. So you should usually uh, open CSV. Just let's open CSV to see what we can find. I'm sorry that it's taking a while for Excel to bring up. Yeah, great, okay. So um, on the first column, you see the full path of the image and you can see where the image is from. So most images are from my local computer, but we have one uh, image um, from a remote location and it is written as URL here. You can um, see the uh, result of the uh, of, uh, uh, um, of Google uh, visions analysis. So for all the attributes starting with GV, it means good. It means that these attributes are from Google Vision. So GV stands for Google Vision. And you can see, and you, uh, you, uh, you can scroll it um, to the right to see, uh, okay, what you get from all these attributes and what are the results. For these numbers, these are the probability um, of the uh, corresponding labels um, in the left. And you were, uh, and, um, and it is great for you to have a quick look and understand what these images may be related or do they correspond to uh, uh, um, the actual images that you want to um, study. And you will see uh, well the um, full URLs that I just mentioned, the fully matched, the, the URLs of fully, of fully matched images and also the um, and the, well, the URLs of web pages, you can find these images. And you can also see the result of Microsoft um, Azure and all the attributes of Microsoft Azure are, are started with MA. And you will see a similar set of outputs. And when you scroll to the right further, you will see the result from Clarify and the results uh, from Clarify are started with CL. So, so now I hand over to Jana to explain to you how to make use of um, uh, uh, um, the outputs of the inspector GUI to, uh, well, to perform analysis. Thank you. Thanks, Jason. Let me share my screen and just, yeah, maybe. Maybe this, yes. Now let me share my screen here. Okay. Can you see my screen there online here? Yes. <laughs> Okay, so now uh, let's say I'm going now to try to summarize some possibilities and not all possibilities or what one can do with the Vision API's outputs. So mainly we can make sense of a large collections of images, but the same collection of image through different perspectives, right? So we can look at the content of the image itself using um, 
using the different features mm -hmm. and then we have to keep in mind the different uh, commercial vision APIs has name differently the features. So for example, using labels or face or gender detection, um, detection of sensitive or not safe for work content and etc. In the same collection of images, we can uh, look at the context of the images. I would say that can be cultural, social or political context. And this feature, it's an exclusive feature of Google. So it is one that is named uh, Web Detection. And Jason has explained a little bit about web entities. So, and, and I have here also an example to show you that the web entities can tell you what is in the image, but also its context, right? Informing you uh, the name of a person, uh, a location, a topic, an event, uh, and then it goes beyond the content of the image, the, the image itself. We can look at the sites of image circulation, again, using this feature that only uh, uh, Google offers, uh, web detection. So basically it is uh, going to tell where fully matching images are found, right, at the moment. And these, you have two types of outputs. So you can see actually the image URL, so the actual actual place of the image or web pages and then of course if you choose one on another what you see uh, uh, can be a little bit different right in terms of, of, of the outputs and also you cannot uh, double check if you opt for web pages and then that image will located in that web page and then if you wanted to go there and check the image might be there or not because the web page may be like be updated or remove the content so this is something that we may, may want to keep in mind uh, it's not here <laughs> it's here and um so yeah so we need to make sure uh we understand the chosen feature uh, knowing not only what they offer but how they work and then i'm just going to uh, quickly give you this example and how these uh, let's say it is entangled with with our not only our methodological choices but how we kind of analyze the outputs so this is like an example of this ontological structure based on on wordnet right and uh, Google does also use like this topicality rating, as, as you can say. So you, you have on one side the photo of a wombat, right? And then you see all the possibilities that this model uh, has as a background, like pre-labeled, uh, pre-conceived um, labels to uh, give textual description to an image. And then you see like on the right, you see the outputs right the the labels thing animal mammal etc etc so it follows like this uh, order and this is like the type of output we may have in our collection of images and of course what comes first for instance here thing or maybe animal it's going to uh, appear more if if we are to to create like networks with computer vision outputs and images. And that is actually what happens, right? So on the network itself, we can actually grasp uh, not only the, the image content, but also these uh, uh, ontological structure, this topicality, topicality rating. So you see like the, that goes from mammal, dog, dog breed, retriever, and so from a general, to a more specific um, textual description uh, informing uh, what is in the image. And this also, uh, in terms of building networks with computer vision uh, outputs and images, also informs the, how the images are located and spatialized, I mean the position of the images on your network, that can, can be also helpful for 
interpreting and reading your network. So this is a, an example uh, of one uh, network of images using uh, image classification as output. So image clusters here inform, we could say, the granularity or level of specificity of a, a visual learning uh, model for image classification, right? In the periphery zones of the network, you may see um, clusters of images that are unique, right? Food, dog breeds, you have like that tiles or musical instruments. And that is uh, important to understand also um, uh, how they are positioned in this size, in this way within the network. So this is just to give you an example. And now um, we, you can click on this link. Of course, in, in this uh, time that we have here right now, we may not have time to, to do everything, right? But this, just let me show you some possibilities of uh, actually following a few recipes to, to use the outputs of computer vision with networks. So where is my recipe? It's here. So, and then you have, just a minute. Yeah, maybe better, yes. So you have like uh, three suggestions. One, it is using image circulation with Google Vision API with a very basic, with very basic uh, type of vis visualizations. For instance, the first one uh, from the spreadsheets until raw graphs, right? The second one. Um, from Google Spreadsheets and then using Gephi, right? And then the PDF file. So let's let's see this one, this first. Okay. Yeah. And then in the recipe, you can see you have you have like the detailed description. So what we can do and how. And if you do not have a data set, we also offer here like samples, right? And those samples, they are not part of any specific study, but if they are just there to help you in understand how to do the step-by-step -step and test by yourself. They are small samples. Actually, I'm using here the same collection of uh, images that Jason just shared with you. And then let's say that, uh, so you see you have some GIFs, you have the step-by-steps, -step, you have links showing you how uh, to visualize, for instance, in this case, sites of image circulation, uh, looking at a uh, very basic uh, visualization, but that can be very helpful as well. So the second recipe, it is networks of image description, right? And for those, we may want to consider two types of outputs, labels, right? Or other names, labels, I, I'm saying like um, using Google uh, Vision, but Microsoft could be another name, Clarify might be other. And then you have the description of the content of the image itself, right? And then you can also opt for using web entities, which is a more contextual description of your collections of images. And again, here you see some step-by-step, -step, also links and explaining how you can do that. And with this data set that we are sharing here with you, you would see something like these networks here. Right again, they are not part of a specific project. It's it's only to help you to practice. Then we have a um, third option, which we call in cross-platform image analysis with Vision APIs outputs. But in this case, we don't need to use. You don't need to see the image, right? 
And, uh, and I would also recommend for those who are interested in using web entities, I would recommend to do the same that we are proposing here, but with the web entities results. So if you have like collections of images cross platform, let's say um, TikTok, uh, thumbnails, uh, images, right? Um, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and you wanted to, to compare and you wanted to see what do they have in common or what it is like the specificities of each platform vernacular. So I would use and I would follow uh, this example here. That is a network uh, using computer vision outputs, but without seeing the images. So the example that, that is here, it is actually uh, comparing uh, comparing uh, vision APIs, right? And that maybe you are not interested in doing that. But however, if you think this same logic for comparing and using web entities for Instagram, TikTok, or other sort of digital environment in which your collection of images are coming from, and imagine that we are talking about a same topic. So imagine we are talking about, um, let me see, give me one topic, Elena. I don't know, conspiracy. Conspiracy, okay. So let's see that we that you extracted, uh, you use the same query, cross platforms, right? And you went to different digital platforms on environment and then you extracted collections of images from it and then you wanted to make sense of these collections of images in a fast way and without plotting uh, you know large collections of images on your computer mm -hmm. so you can also make sense of that uh, using nodes as, as platforms and outputs as web entities and then you just build like the same network that is being uh, suggested here uh, for this type of, uh, of output and then you can make sense and then you would see in the middle, right, what are the web entities that describes uh, your collection of images that are shared across platforms and then you would see the specificity of each platform. That for me it's quite um, in interesting. So yes, and this is like it, they are the results what, that I shared with you, what you see. And, um, well, yes, from, from my side, it, is, it was mainly uh, sharing this uh, piece of cake here for you, <laughs> uh, here and, uh, and, um, and there, online. Um, so for you to, to try it, it out and see how, how does it work. We have tested it before in, in a context of a, a, in a context of data sprint. And um, I can tell you that some participants succeeded in, in following uh, the recipes and uh, yeah, and uh, building these types of network to make use of uh, the outputs of, of vision APIs. As I said, this is not, is not the unique way of doing things, <laughs> but it's uh, what we are suggesting. And, uh, and of course you are free to use your technical imagination and, and uh, to try out different things. Also, um, what I wanted to say is that if you, if you use, oh no, this not, yeah, this one. So if you use, if you use this recipe, right, and if you use Meme Spectre GUI, so I would ask you to, to please uh, sit it and make the, the references, right? So you see here uh, Meme Spectre GUI uh, reference, which are software reference, and then you have also here like one paper in English and Spanish that kind of uh, present and introduce these networks that I'm talking, that's, that I'm sharing with you right now, actually this recipe, these computer vision networks, right? And, uh, and also uh, another recipe that kind of relates to, to a little bit of my talk this morning. And uh, yes, um, 
since uh, the, the the recipe, like the full recipe, the full recipe exists, but not yet publicly available. So and so while it is not publicly available, I would ask you, uh, yes, to please consider sitting. And um, thank you. And I think Jason and I can be here uh, to any questions that you may have. So if you wanna, let me see what time is it? Yeah, we, we still have some time. So the idea right now is that you can either want to try out Meme Spectre, right? With other uh, uh, data set, or you can either try try out some of the recipes, and then I would be here and uh, Jason there to help you in uh, whatever you need uh, in both cases. Okay, yeah. thank you. <laughs> Yes. Just let me stop. Maybe stop sharing. I don't know how to break the. And put like a 